Hey, everybody, this is Perch. Um, <laughs> all right, we're going to talk about Savage Dragon. So Savage Dragon is a book that was one of the uh, Image founder books, Eric Larson. And he came out and he did this limited series for Savage Dragon when uh, Image began. And then he, uh, you know, it turned into a ongoing series. And to his great credit, it, it's continued to just go. Uh, Savage Dragon has more or less gone from the 90s to the 2000s to the aughts, or, you know, to aughts, to the teens, to the 20s. And Savage Dragon is still clocking along. And it's not entirely clear where that book is going or, or where the, uh, where the point of that book is going, but it's still being published. And for that, you know, that's a good thing. I, I mean, good for, good for him. Um, and Savage Dragon is a fun book to kind of make fun of because what happens is Eric Larson has experimented with the format and actually done a pretty big kind of all new Marvel now kind of approach where the book was one thing. Uh, in the nineties, it was kind of, you know, superhero action fighting against villains um, the villains were, in fairness, a lot of people in Savage Dragon were, you know, dressed in various 90s co costumes, which means generally, you know, giant tits and panties. Um, but, you know, that, that it just kind of evolved that way. And a lot of people like Savage Dragon uh, for that. It, it's, you know, I, I think that people just be upfront with what they like and don't like. And for a lot of comics in the 90s, you know, the way we would run around wearing string bikinis and, and just basically barely enough clothing to avoid them being put in the adult section. And, you know, that was, that was how it was. It was the nineties and just how, how they rolled. And Savage Dragon was definitely a part of that. You know, Dart's costume was not, you know, the most, uh, actually I wasn't wearing a parka, put it that way. And, um, and so Eric Larson rolled with that for quite a while. And, and the comic was more or less ignored. I mean, the sales were, clocking in pretty low i mean it was not a high selling book it was not it was a book that was kind of from you know all kind of examination of it, it was not a book that was really you know breaking the boundaries of profitability um but you know it would it would get out i mean a lot of the comic round numbers had in like five thousand six thousand copies sold for a lot of the you know the the majority of its career and the comic just went where the creator wanted it to. And Eric Larson was a writer and the artist. So therefore he had control to kind of do whatever he wants. And, and then um, at some point, Eric Larson decided, you know what? I'm going to go more hard R or in Z 17 territory and go ahead and show things like, you know, the Savage dragon had a son, a uh, Malcolm. And, you know, I, again, there's a lot of things to actually admire about Savage dragon. Like, Eric Larson just went where he wanted to go. And as a creator of the book, you know, he, he did that. Um, he also aged the characters and, and, you know, didn't stick with just kind of the status quo of, of what was working. He actually tried to go in some different directions. And so one of the things he did was he took the original Savage Dragon and kind of phased him out and went with the new Savage Dragon, which is, you know, uh, his son, Valk. And he did a bunch of, you know, adventures in that direction. And then at some point he decided that Malcolm would have a, um, you know, a, a, a girlfriend and he decided, you know, why not draw this girlfriend completely naked and why not draw her being kind of blasted out of the bed with Malcolm's massive load? Like, why, why not do that too? And so the Savage Dragon kind of veered into that territory and it, it played there for a while and there was a bunch of kind of threesomes and other things that would go on and foursomes, I think, at one point. And, um, and he seemed to, I don't know, Eric Larson was having fun with that. And then it kind of went in a little bit of a weird direction where the Savage Dragon had kids. And then those kids would like, you know, be hanging out and sometimes like watching porn and other things. Like it, that got like, you know, I, 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 like you're tying things together in kind of a weird way. It was meant to be kind of lighthearted. But, you know, in an era of... Twitter, where people are taking panels of things and, and in some cases taking them not out of context because the context is all there in the panel, but at least making kind of a bigger deal. The, the point of Savage Dragon was that it was a kind of a lighthearted, not taking itself too seriously, joking around comic. And, he, he, you know, he would do scenes of a variety of things and then people would take the panels of 
areas where the children are exposed to a variety of things and go, you know, people are like, oh my God, can you believe he's doing this? Well, yeah, because if you've been reading the Savage Dragon all this time, none of this was a, you know, deep surprise. So yeah, I'm, I'm not saying that makes it right or not. It's just, you know, the shock and outrage was not really there. Bear in mind, by the way, I am saying all this about Savage Dragon. I'm giving it a pretty fair shake. Even though Eric Larson has personally gone on Facebook in various occasions and called me an absolute dumbass prick. And from from uh, hearing through friends, through friends of his and, you know, people who, you know, I know at Image and everything else, Eric Larson thinks I am an absolute asshole. And uh, I think the comment was made, I have no idea if he actually said this or not, as it was being passed along. If he ever saw me at a convention, he would punch me right in the mouth. I feel fairly confident I could defend myself against Eric Larson at this point in our lives, but, you know, who knows. But I have give you that context but be, you know, to basically explain that Savage Dragon is one of those books where you kind of, you, you know what you're going to get. And so you can say, I think that what Eric Larson is doing in, in Savage Dragon is disgusting, but it's a hard argument to say, I am shocked and outraged by what Eric Larson is doing because what he's doing is pretty well you know, I mean, he, he's, he's advertising what you're getting. Like it's not, it's, you, you can't really be fooled by what he's putting out when he's putting out a book that at times is carried a label absolutely for mature audiences and other things. I mean, like, like at some point, all the warnings are there. You've chosen to ignore them. Uh, but that's just kind of a little bit of what's going on in that book. Anyway, in a recent issue, um, Eric Larson decides to take advantage of the Mickey Mouse uh, entering the public domain aspect, and he puts in Steamboat Willie, uh, version of Mickey, kind of the black and white Mickey, and, uh, you know, basically Savage Dragon and, and Maxine, his wife, uh, is his wife or his girlfriend? I'll be honest, I'm, I'm mostly up to speed with Savage Dragon lore, but not entirely, so I don't recall if they're married. I think they are married. Anyway, Maxine's like, I'm a big fan of you, Mickey Mouse, and Mickey Mouse's like, I'm a big fan of you, especially that part where you masturbate in front of a big crowd, and I'm getting a big steamboat willy myself, if you know what I mean. And Mickey basically going for the cheap, dirty joke. And uh, this is just, you know, how there you go with comics. Um, and and all of this is uh, on brand for Savage Dragon. I find it funny, and I find it good to kind of poke at and laugh at. But, um, uh, you know, the, what's what's curious to me, and I'm honestly hoping that some of you in the comments uh, could explain this to me, is why why are we doing kind of, you know, moral purity tests on Savage Dragon? We all know what it is. I'm not, again, I'm not saying it's good or bad. In fact, as a comic store retailer, somebody who sold Savage Dragon, Savage Dragon is kind of a pain in the ass because... You know, it's a book, it doesn't sell a lot of copies, and when it veers in and out of adult territory, as a retailer, it's annoying. You know, I I, I know this is, uh, I've, I've said this to comic people, and 100% of the time, people I don't like, people I do like, have all been annoyed when I say this, which is, as a retailer, when you get comics in your box, when you when stuff comes into the store, what you do not have time to do mostly because you've got 150 plus comics you got to put on the shelf and depending on your shop, maybe you're putting them in bags, maybe you're not, what I mean, who knows what you're doing, but it's a kind of a pain in the ass to stock that shelf. And you generally want a new section. You want them alphabetized and so you're moving stuff around. And it's like, there's, there's some work there. And what's annoying is when you have to try and figure out what the F this comic has in it, because if you put a comic where Savage Dragon's wife is, you know, is, in the words of Mickey Mouse flicking her bean um, in the pages, um, you can't put that on the shelf because some mother is going to come in and the kid's going to say, this one looks like a green Hulk with a fin on his head. Sure. I like, I, I'll, uh, why not? I'll, let's buy this. And they get home and then pr promptly get to see, you know, a Savage Dragon's wife, you know, masturbating all over the page. And then the parents coming back in or calling the, you know, the, the local police or, you know, like they, they get you in trouble with this stuff. It is good to know when you're going to have like a penis in your comic so that, you know, to like put it in a different section of the store, because you put that in general accessibility for anybody to go pick it up. Somebody is going to bitch 
and it's just going to cause you a world of a headache. So that's not, that's not good as a retailer. And what's weird is I've said this to various creators and people at the time, like, Hey, if you decide you're going to put a penis in your comic, you know, can you, can you give a, give a heads up to the retailer who to at least know where to put this thing so they don't get some jackass from the, you know, the local government there trying to shut you down. This has happened to me. It happened to me with, um, actually it happened to me with a Mark Millar book. Uh, was it, um, God, fuck it was, uh, anyway, there was a dick in it. It was the one that he, that didn't get finished. It was, uh, the one with the military. Uh, why, why am I not remembering this title? Anyway, it was like, there was, uh, superpowers and like the, the, the second issue or the third issue had an Arab on the wing of a plane with a knife like that. Like, I, I know I'm not helping here, but they, anyway, that, that this comic, um, that kind of, that, that stuff, when you're not told, Hey, this thing's got a, got, got problems in it. That anyway, whatever. What always I get into with the, with creators, whenever I mention this is like, why, why are we such a you know, Puritan society? I don't know. I don't know, but we are. Yes, things are different in France. You can show a penis everywhere you want in France, but here in the U.S., we are what we are. So please help us not get shut down by the local government. Anyway, um, I this happened to me twice. I don't remember the other book. It was something else, though. It wasn't Savage Dragon, in fairness. Um, but in general, um, I, I think that, you know... I, it's perfectly okay for a creator to go down this track and do whatever they want to do, but it's it's very helpful to people selling these comics so they have a heads up they know it's coming. I don't think this is an re unreasonable thing to ask for, but apparently it is because I'll tell you this is this is the one item where I have a zero percent you know perch agreement factor from uh, from various comic creators. Everybody's like uh, they, nobody agrees with this this thing, but it's a real it's a real pain in the ass. I'm just saying. And if, uh, let's say for you know, behalf of retailers everywhere, please don't do that shit to us. It just makes our life a living hell. Now, sometimes there's accidents, but it is like that Batman, um, damned, was it damned? It was, no, it wasn't damned. Uh, it was the one where Batman, we, we had the bat dick in the cave and the coloring of the page actually highlighted the dick more than I think what the creator intended. And so, um, anyway. Uh, that one was a, that one was a not good. It was, um, it, it, that, 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 that was the second one for me. That, that one just caused immense pain and the creators like try to be funny and edgy, but you know, the, the, the vehicle in which you're selling the book is, is a mess. Anyway, Savage Dragon. Um, I don't mind this book. I just setting the kind of record straight. Sometimes Eric Larson does things in those pages that I will post on like, look at this shit because it's crazy, but it is what it is. It's a book that, you know, is not for everybody. It's not my favorite book, but I get it. And again, like I said before, I'm saying this is a guy who Eric Larson has personally said he'd like to punch me in the mouth. Allegedly. I do know he's posted a lot of things on uh, Twitter and other, or uh, Facebook and things calling me a complete moron. So, you know, it is what it is for all the perch haters out there. There's your uh, Huckleberry right there, Eric Larson. Anyway, um, these, sometimes these books are what they are. And for me, at least when a book is, is open, when they wear what they are on their sleeve, when, when it's just clear, like, this is what the comic is. This is what we do. I'm even whether it's for me or not for me, I appreciate it. So there you go. It's uh, who knew you're going to click on a video and get me complimenting Savage Dragon. Bet you didn't expect that. Always surprising. That's what we got here. Thanks for listening.